Hi guys, what an eruption night, what an impressive, massive eruption with a long fissure, a second fissure opened north of the first fissure. But what we have to say for the infrastructure for Grindavik, for Swartzangi, where the power plant is located and the Blue Lagoon, that was, I wouldn't say best case scenario, but a very, very favorable scenario because everyone was assuming that the next eruption would be further south towards Grindavik and then it would have lava flows towards Swartzangi and towards Grindavik because in the forefront, the workers have said it's going to be hard to protect the power plant, the Blue Lagoon and Grindavik should the eruption do the same what the last eruption did, meaning send the lava flows in these directions. And now this is ideal because since this eruption has begun, no infrastructure has been threatened so far. And it looks like it will not be threatened at all because the lava flows are going into a different direction. Although the lava carpet is very, very large in a very short period of time, it's already stretching 12 square kilometers. And as far as I remember in the last eruptions, even at the end of the eruption, we were like maybe something with the other eruptions between six and nine square kilometers for the whole event. And now just day one, we already have that much. So it's impressive, it looks impressive, but thankfully, and that's very, very good for the residents of Grindavik, it hasn't threatened the town again. And that's why they have lowered the danger level for Grindavik. So if you have a look at the new a map that they have, the hazard map that they have released, you see Grindavik is now from red to orange because the lava is not flowing there. And then if you look at that rectangle, that's the purple rectangle, you see the red line, there you see these two fissures that have opened and you see the shorter one that's going to the north. And everything that's further south seems to have died down. So the most activity is further north, which is also very, very good. And um, if you look at a map that they have released um, that shows the lava flow here in yellow, you see where it was going. So nothing did go even into the direction of Grindavik. And also it looks like that the old lava carpet from the last eruption, that's that gray stuff that you see around the Swartzang um, the Swartzangi defense walls here, that this has built somewhat maybe a natural barrier for the next lava flow because it's not flowing towards the defense walls a little bit, but it's not reaching the defense walls and it has also not crossed Grindavico Vigua there. So you see it's flowing north and it seems like now it's not making much way again. It's more around the eruption craters, but it's not flowing and spreading that fast anymore. And so that's why Blue Lagoon opens tomorrow. News just came out and also the Northern Lights in. They're not losing any time, but you know, at least in terms of lava flow, it looks okay, right? So if Grindavica Vigo and the access roads are not under threat right now, um, yeah, right? I mean, the only thing, I don't know, they never talk about this, is that there is this shallow magma chamber underneath Swartzangi. And you know, if that is emptied out completely, let's say by this eruption, because scientists were assuming, well, maybe at one point the magma flow from the deeper magma reservoir will die down and will stop. Well, then we have an empty magma chamber there. Can that collapse? Will that then create a crater or something like this, like it happened in other volcanic areas in Italy and stuff? So would that mean Swartzangi would sink? Is that a risk? I don't know. They're not talking about it. So it seems they think no. That's what I have in mind if I hear that. Um, so, of course, the mayor of Grindavik says that many people are relieved when the eruption started and they heard it was clear that the town and the infrastructure was not in danger. Although people have been bought out by the government, 
They still care about these homes. Rist yfir og grinda við grimd. And before the evacuation took place, there was 30 homes occupied the day of the evacuation there were roughly 22 to 23 homes occupied and of course the mayor says it's difficult to live with this uncertainty for a long time and not know what we can expect and i think if this eruption dies down we have to see will the land rise continue will the shallow magma chamber fill up right away then they will see the next eruption even thorwald or thorwald's on who was a supporter of the theory that the eruption series in the Sutnuka crater series could end this summer, has said, well, maybe we see 10 more like this, right? So I don't think they're out of the woods. There could be another eruption. The next one could be further south. This volcano surprises us basically with each eruption. So that's why I wouldn't be too sure that this is lasting very long, that feeling of, okay, we're good, it's secure. Then there were a lot of tourists that wanted to see this eruption. And uh, some people were driving 200 kilometers all through Iceland to see it. And uh, they were all parking along a major road, Rikjanesbraut again, which was very dangerous. So they wanted to see the eruption. So the police was trying to make them move on because it's a major highway, so to speak, but it's always been the same. And they say it's hard to keep people away from even walking towards the eruption, but that's what people do. I mean, you gotta take your own risk. So according to the latest measurements from the Icelandic Metrological Office, they're saying that the eruption has lost its power. So for if we compare what's happening now to what happened when the eruption started, we only see, they say, 1 20th of the original lava flow right now when we had the peak at the beginning. So right now they say the lava flow is at 100 cubic meters per second. So also, that is an indication that probably what's happening now, the existing spread of that lava carpet, it will build up on top of each other and uh, probably not spread too much further. But we have to wait how long this eruption will last. We've seen it in the last eruption. A lava lake was forming somewhere. There was an area where the lava was pooling and then some rock formation lava bed that was holding this lake together broke and it was sending a lava waterfall towards Svartsengi and was breaching the defense walls there. For now, it doesn't look like this because in my opinion, it's flowing to the north, to the east in areas where it hasn't really flown um float uh, i always say flown <laughs> it's not flying it's flowing um has flowed um what did i want to say it hasn't flowed there in the last eruption so probably there's enough space nothing is holding it back it can freely flow into that area which is really really great and we also heard that they started to continue the work on the defense walls again. So they had evacuated everyone this time. Usually the work was continuing even during an eruption, even, even with lava approaching, but they were careful this time because they worried, they thought if the eruption is close to Swartzangi, it and it could be more powerful because the magma chamber was so full this time, they were worried that a rapid and, and a huge amount of lava might approach Swartzangi Sangi maybe breached the walls and put the workers at risk, but they are back. They are working on the defense walls in Swartzangi. And so they say also it was a relief to see that the lava was flowing in a northern direction away from the defense walls. Um, they have already built up the defense walls to 15 meters in height. So that's about let me think, <laughs> 50 feet. I'm always trying to convert it for you guys. And this, this is maybe crazy. We're in Canada here, we're metric. And where I grew up in Germany, it's, it's metric, right? So I'm not good with feet at all. But what I have in my head, and you know, I have a farm, I have horses. I measure, my, my measuring points are the measures of, of riding arena. So I definitely know 
a 30 meter wide riding arena is 100 feet. So if I'm thinking, okay, 15 meters, that's half of a riding arena, which so that must be 50 feet. And I know 200 feet, that's roughly 60 meters. So, and then I try to convert this if I have smaller numbers or bigger numbers. So it's, it's not that easy if you have never used this much in your life right and i know in canada we should be metric theoretically and everything is like in speed is in kilometers and stuff like this but everyone uses feet and not really meters so if i'm walking around and say to someone this is three meters long they look at me uh, what's that so i'm like yeah three meters 30 meters the riding arena width that's 100 feet so three meters must be 10 feet this is how I do it in the back of my head so that just on a side note so 50 meters high they were talking just yesterday that it's 12 meters high so they must have really upped their game they, those guys are, are really absolute great and um, yeah that's an update I think what we can do right now is just watch the eruption and enjoy the beautiful pictures because nothing is in danger, nobody is at risk, no infrastructure was at risk during that eruption and I think that's a great thing to know and uh, what we have to wait now is for me will the land rise start again we know on the last eruption basically it started right away again so then we know we will see another eruption again and then it's going to be interesting where will the next one be as i said swart sanging Grindavik doesn't look like they're out of the woods yet with new eruptions coming but it looks like with this eruption it went smoothly it went very well so we're all happy about that so guys have a great morning afternoon evening wherever you are guys i have an interesting video for you that's about the super yacht that was sinking in italy in sicily where we are looking at etna the volcano all the time it's in the end screen check it out it's incredible that a 56 million dollar super yacht was able to sink within a minute so there is a big time user error probably because the manufacturer i mean they always say that it said it was unsinkable but if you leave spaces open for water to come in um maybe they had the keel lifted stuff like this check it out it's interesting help me push this video out a little bit and thanks for your ongoing support for your supers for your coffees register at my buymeacoffee.com website it's for free to be a follower there then you receive emails when a, a new eruption is happening i try not to send out too many emails i don't want to spam you guys but there's postings and there's everything and of course if you want to support my channel you can buy me a coffee there as well so i see you here i see you there become a channel member i open up the channel membership that's a new feature so i want to show you a lot of behind the scene videos and stuff like this and i've already uploaded a bunch of them so it would be great to see you there as well that's just an ongoing support for this channel that makes it possible that i can spend more and more time doing these videos hopefully um so yeah guys thanks a lot stay safe where you are and uh, i hope to see you very soon bye bye